everybody, my name is Miss Pam. I'm from Building Blocks Child Development Center here in Spencer, West Virginia. And I have a read, make, and do project for today. And I guess it's hard to guess what um, we're going to talk about today. I think it's going to be dinosaurs. So I got my friends here today. I got my Parasaur Office. Couldn't think about it for a second. My Brachiosaurus and my Stegosaurus. And our book today is called. I have a stegosaurus mom can i please written by lois grambling and pictures by hb lewis can i have a stegosaurus mom can i please that's what every kid needs is a stegosaurus can i have a stegosaurus mom can i please if i had a stegosaurus mom my stegosaurus could sleep with me in my bed every night and I wouldn't have to worry about scary monsters jumping out of my closet and pouncing on me as soon as I close my eyes. That stegosaurus is definitely keeping watch. Because if they ever even tried, my stegosaurus would jump out of my bed and pounce on them and they'd be squashed, splat. Flatter than flat. Can I have a stegosaurus, mom? Can I please? If I had a stegosaurus, mom, when you make some yucky vegetables for supper and I put tons of it on my plate and I said I couldn't have, and you said I couldn't have any dessert until my plate was cleaned, my stegosaurus could eat it all up for me and my plate would be sparkling clean and you'd be happy. I'd be happy, and my stegosaurus would be happy too. Because a stegosaurus really loves yucky vegetables. Miss Frosner told us that in science class. And if Miss Frosner forgot to reserve the school bus for us the day that we were supposed to take our field trip to the museum, my stegosaurus could take us. And I'd sit high on his head with Mrs. Frosner, and all the other kids could sit up and down the rest of him. And I'd tell Zelmo Zimmer to hold on tight to the spikes on his tail so he wouldn't fall off. Miss Frosner always seats us alphabetically. I guess Zelmo Zimmer, he has to sit at the very end. Can I have a stegosaurus, Mom? Can I please? If I had a stegosaurus mom, whenever there was a parade in town, I'd get the best view of anyone because I'd climb up on my stegosaurus and see everything. And the drum major would wave at me as he passed by, and I'd wave back. Can I have a stegosaurus mom? Can I please? If I had a stegosaurus mom at summer camp, my stegosaurus and I would do great in all the races. Thundering across the finish line first, every time and we do great in the tug of war too the kids on the other side wouldn't have a chance can i have a stegosaurus mom can i please if i had a stegosaurus mom on halloween you and dad wouldn't have to go out trick-or-treating with me my stegosaurus would and i'd be safe really safe who pick on a little stegosaurus trick-or-treating on halloween when a big stegosaurus was with him. And who wouldn't give a special treat to a little stegosaurus ringing their doorbell on Halloween when a big stegosaurus was with him? Can I have a stegosaurus, Mom? Can I please? If I had a stegosaurus, Mom, my stegosaurus would make a super mascot for my peewee football team cheering us on during halftime and thundering up and down the bleachers every time anyone made a touchdown. The crowd will go wild, and so would the coach. Can I have a stegosaurus, Mom? Can I please? If I had a stegosaurus, Mom, and I suddenly remembered on Christmas Eve that I'd left something off my Christmas list, I could jump on my stegosaurus, and we'd go galloping, galloping, galloping to the North pole fast and when we got there i'd tell santa what it was i left off my list and santa would thank me for coming and he'd add it to my list of course but mom 
The most important reason for having a stegosaurus, the one that really counts the most, Mom, is that yesterday I found this gigantic egg in the woods under a pile of leaves. And I've been sitting on it ever since. And it's beginning to crack open right now. Crack, crack, crack. Uh-oh. Can I have a Tyrannosaurus Rex, Mom? Can I please? Because if I had a Tyrannosaurus Rex, Mom, the end. His Stegosaurus wasn't a Stegosaurus, was it? There's a T-Rex. Now, Stegosaurus, they have flat feet. And this one, well, he's a toy, so he doesn't really look like he has any teeth at all. But Stegosaurus have flat teeth, and they're plant eaters. T-Rexes have sharp teeth, and sharp teeth are meat eaters. And, well, I don't think that would work out real well for a pet. So, I have two projects for you today. First project we're going to do is with the letter D. D for dinosaur. We have the D for dinosaur. And we have some pieces that we need. Now, we're going to turn our D over sideways. And that's going to be the bottom and the back of our dinosaur. And our dinosaur needs some feet. We'll give you some little toenails. Now, mine I didn't glue together so I could show you all the little pieces, but now yours you can glue together. So he's got some little feet. And, well, he needs a neck. So there's his neck. And, well, my dinosaur, he's a sharp tooth. He's got sharp teeth. So he is a meat eater. And now I've got some letters. Now all my letters have, or some little orange triangles here, and they have spikes or letters on them. And what we're going to do is I'm going to find my name. My name is Pam, and it starts with a P. So we're going to get our P. And then I need my A. And I need my M. And there, that's my dinosaur, because it's got my name on it. You can go through, and you can put your letters on there, and you can make your own dinosaur. So, now I have another project to do. Now, this project, I'm going to use my friends up here. Um, and before I start this, I'm going to say hi to my grandkids. They are um, Sarah and Jackson and Evan. They're down in Georgia. Hi, guys. And little Miss Elizabeth, and she's in Montana. Hi. So, Mama loves you. She can't come see you right now because of all this icky virus, and we got to make sure that we're all safe. So, I'll have to save my hugs and my kisses for the grandbabies until everything gets better. And it's going to get better. It's going to take a little while. But if we remember to wash our hands and eat nice healthy foods and get plenty of exercise and stay away from everybody that's not in your family. Don't go to Walmart. Don't go to the park. Stay home and stay safe. So now what we're going to do today is we're going to make dinosaur fossils. So. What I have from a dinosaur fossils is I have some things that are a little, well, kind of weird. But we're going to start with one cup of flour. So we're going to pour our flour into our bowl. One cup of flour. doesn't matter if it's all purpose or baked, self-rising, because it's not going to go in the oven. It doesn't need to be baked or anything like that. Then we have one half cup of salt. I'm going to pour that in there. Now, we have something that evidently I dropped on the floor. It's in my bag. I've got a bag down here that's got a little bit of everything in it. And I don't seem to see it. But what do I do with it? Now 
Now you know how it goes. If you just had something, and then when you go to find it again, it's gone. So I don't know where it went. Literally, don't know where it went. Oh, there it is. That's on my chair. I'm on a silly place, but the. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is, I when I when I do something like this with the school agers at building blocks, and they have to measure like a cup of flour and a half a cup of salt, I kind of be a little tricky about it, and I don't give them the right measuring cup. So if they have to measure a full cup of flour, I may give them the half, and they have to figure out how to do it. Or if they need um, a fourth of a cup. Well, it takes four tablespoons to make a fourth of a cup, and I may just give them the tablespoon and let them figure it out. Give them the cup that they need. Give them the cup that you're giving them. Um, that's not the right one. And let them figure it out. Good math skills. So, um, we have our flour and our salt. And now the icky part. This is one cup of coffee grounds. Now this is, I made one pot of coffee that was really, really strong in my house. So this is one cup of coffee grounds. And this is definitely something, these are cold. Um, we don't wanna use hot coffee grounds because we don't wanna get ourselves burnt. So there's our one cup of coffee grounds and boy oh boy do they smell. And then we have a half a cup of cold coffee. So we're gonna put this in there a little bit at a time and I've added just a little bit of extra on there just in case. Come sometimes you flour is just like that. You sometimes you need a little bit extra. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stir it all up. And boy, oh boy, look at that. Does that not just look delicious? We're not gonna eat it. That would be yucky. So we're gonna stir this all up. And we need to add us a little bit more of our coffee, our cold coffee. I'm going to stir it all up here until it's kind of like, um, almost like Play-Doh. So, we've got it all stirred up here. And now... We need us a piece of parchment paper. We're going to move our dinosaur over here. We need a piece of parchment paper. Wax paper works just fine. Aluminum foil would work just fine. So now we get us a little scoop of our stuff here. Roll it out into a ball. Lay it down there. Pat it out a little bit. And if you make them thinner, they dry faster. So we're gonna pat them out. Doesn't have to be perfect because guess what? You're taking a fossil. Fossils aren't perfect. So then we need our friends. Here's Mr. Stegosaurus. Mr. Stegosaurus gonna step right there in our stuff. And right there is gonna be a stegosaurus print. Now, if we want to make a bigger fossil, of course we need a little bit more stuff. And I probably put just a tad bit too much coffee in it the last time. So, we're going to spread these all out. And if you get a little messy, that's okay. And we got a little friend here. He's a, a let me think, Domatron. We're gonna press him right down in the dough. I'm gonna press his tail down in there a little bit, and then when you pull him back out, it's a little hard to see, but right there is your fossil. Now, like I said, I think I put just a little bit more coffee in there than I needed because they're not working really, really great. But you can see where there you got your print of your fossil in there. And there you made a fossil. All right. 
And there you go. All right. Well, that was Miss Pam from Building Blocks here in Spencer, West Virginia. And I hope you guys had fun. I hope you learned a little bit about some dinosaurs. And not to put too much wet stuff in your dry stuff when you want something to work out the right way. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.